everyone. My name is Splineapple and you're watching the Firo Frontier. This week, we're going to be exploring a few blockchains. We want to showcase exactly why Lelantis is so powerful by comparing the Firo blockchain to blockchains from other leading cryptocurrencies. I hope I piqued your interest, so let's give it a whirl. Before we go to the Blockchain Explorer, I just want to quickly remind you that our anonymization contest is still ongoing. Anonymize your Firo to be entered into a raffle to win prizes. We want everyone to use Lelantis so much, we're literally giving money away. But okay, okay, let's look at Bitcoin. So here we have a normal Bitcoin Blockchain Explorer, and we're looking at some random transaction. If we scroll to the bottom, we'll get to the important information, namely the inputs and the outputs. The input section is just the sender, so this particular address sent 0.202 Bitcoin. The output section is comprised of the addresses that the Bitcoin was sent to, so the recipients. In the case of this particular transaction, we can be very confident that the sender paid this top address for some good or service. And we can be sure of that because the bottom address is the exact same as the sender's. So what happened is that the sender paid some Bitcoin to the intended recipient, but the sender sent the change back to his own wallet. One thing to point out is that the input amount must equal the output amount. The 0.202 Bitcoin on the left equals the 0.01 and the 0.191 Bitcoin on the right. This will be important later. Please notice that this is a lot of information that's just publicly available. We can clearly see that the sender still has 0.191 Bitcoin after this particular transaction. If he wanted to, he could try and hide a little information, like this next example. Now we have another random transaction in the blockchain. The input looks the same as earlier, just one address sending some Bitcoin. The output is a little different though. None of the recipient addresses match the senders. So it's not immediately clear who the main intended recipient is. And since there's three addresses, there's a little more privacy, right? Well, not really. Let's click the top output address. I'm taken to another page which showcases this random person's entire transaction history. Let me emphasize that this is public information. This guy didn't have many transactions though, so let's look at the next output address. This guy has more transactions. A couple of pages worth, actually. And if you look to the right, you can see that I can export all of this wallet's transaction history onto a spreadsheet. A super convenient way to have a lot of information on this guy. The last thing I want to say is that the input amount still matches the output amount, even if there are now three different amounts on the outputs. Now you may be thinking, that's just Bitcoin. There are other cryptocurrencies. Well, let's look at another coin, Ethereum. I won't spend much time on it, but Ethereum is actually a little worse because while Bitcoin uses a UTXO model, Ethereum uses an account model where users are encouraged to use a single address to do everything as opposed to Bitcoin where a typical user can constantly generate new Bitcoin addresses. So here I have another random address and I can see a lot of data on them. And not even just transactions. I can see tokens, loans, and other things. I can export it onto a spreadsheet too, would you look at that? Let me go back to the top and click this drop down. Now I can see all of this address's assets clearly labeled. I don't know about you, but this is a little scary for me. But okay, enough on other cryptocurrencies. We're the Firo frontier after all. So now we're looking at the Firo blockchain. In this random block, I want to focus on this right here. This is not a transaction in the same way that the other blockchains had. What we have here is this address anonymizing their Firo using Lelantis. The output equals the input, minus the small fee for anonymization. Notice this word, Lelantis Mint. Whenever you see a Lelantis Mint, you know that the left side equals the right side because the inputs and outputs are equal. I could click on it and it'll take me to another page which shows all the cases where someone anonymized their Firo. But let's look at another block. Here, we have someone spending some of their Firo from the anonymity set. This 
Lalantis J split means some unknown amount of Fira was the input. The recipient of this transaction received 1000 Fira. However, we don't know if the input was exactly 1000 Fira because of this Lalantis J mint. Remember in the Bitcoin case how the change of the transaction was sent to a public address? Well here, we aren't able to see how much change there even was. What's more, the change just goes back into the anonymity set. As an example, the sender could have sent 1200 Firo. This address received 1000 Firo, but the 200 Firo change is still in the anonymity set. So we have no information on how much anonymous Firo the sender has, past or present. Again, for a Lalantis Mint, you will know the amount of Firo input and output, but for a Lalantis J Mint, you won't. What's more, if we click on either the Lalantis J split or Lalantis J mint, all we will see is a lot of private transactions. I assume they're different people, but I have no way of knowing. Now, when using Lalantis, here's a few tips to keep in mind. One, anonymize often. Don't just do it before you plan on spending Firo. Two, don't spend the exact amount of Firo you just anonymized. And three, use Tor when you can. Please notice that these habits are only necessary as of right now. We are currently on the first version of Lalantis, which is meant to be a transitional protocol where we can retain some auditability as we add further privacy to it. As you saw, the amount of Firo that someone receives is not hidden. So it requires the recipient to perform an additional step to anonymize it. The receiving and the manual anonymization are two points where some metadata is being leaked, which is why the tips are important. However, we obviously want to design a protocol that lets you use the currency privately and not require you to think about these things. This is where our upcoming Lalantis version 2 comes in. The recipient will not need to re-anonymize his coins because the amount he receives is also hidden. So we get rid of both points of metadata leakage in one go. The cryptography for Lalance's version 2 has all been worked out and audited, and we are beginning implementation work for this soon. Just in case you're feeling impatient though, the coding work is not going to take nearly as long. Since Lalantis version 2 is an extension of Lalantis version 1, we're just adding onto the existing code base instead of coding an entirely new protocol from scratch. Please be patient, and I guarantee you the wait will be worth it. I hope all of that made sense. If you have questions, leave a comment below, or better yet, stop by the Firo forum. It's really important to us that you understand how and why the Lalantis protocol makes Firo so different. Well, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. This is Spline Apple, signing off.